Guys, I got another one of my holy grails in, and I'm about to tell you all about it. Let's get it. YouTube, what's good, man? It's your boy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy on the channel where fashion and fragrance both matter. So I don't just tell you how you can smell great. I tell you some and give you some tips on how you can look your best as well. I think both are equally important. <laughs> so if you're into that kind of content, I hope you won't mind subscribing to this channel. And make sure you hit the bell icon as well. That way, anytime I upload new content on YouTube, you'll get notified. Guys, on today, I have something that is special. It's definitely special to me. Uh, one of my Holy Grail fragrances. I got a sample of this fragrance a couple of months back. And from the moment I put my nose on it, I knew that I had to have it. Now, this fragrance is a little bit more expensive. It's from the house of Roger Parfums. And I'm speaking of Roger Parfums La Nuit, number two. And I'm talking about Parfum de la Nuit, number two, from the house of Rosia Parfums. So that's what I'm going to be covering today, guys. I actually did an unboxing of this video on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, please make sure that you head over there and do that. I'm, I, am, I am the underscore bowtie underscore fragrance guy uh, over there on Instagram. So head over there to Instagram and follow your boy. Also, guys, right before I get into the review and I run the intro, I want to remind you guys this week we're going to be doing uh, the live stream celebration, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. I want to be doing some major giveaways, some niche sample packs, uh, some gift cards to uh, some of your favorite fragrance discount uh, retailers. So make sure you guys are tuned in at 9 o'clock. Go ahead and mark your calendars for the live stream. I may have some special guests coming through as well. You don't know. You don't know. We don't know, we're celebrating, so just make sure you're here at 9 o'clock or you're tuned in at 9 o'clock this Friday. So I'm going to run the intro, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about Parfums de la Nuit number two from the house of Roger Parfums. You know how we do. Keep it locked right here. The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Obviously, sometimes presentation isn't as important, but when we're talking about a fragrance like this, presentation is certainly a part of the whole deal. So the fragrance comes in a box that looks like this. All right. So again, uh, just starting off, I feel like you're getting your money's worth on the box. You get Rosie Dove's signature on that both sides of the box. All right. Uh, on the back of the box, it says a fragrance by Rosie Dove made in England. All right. And just on the bottom, you have some information, obviously, on the fragrance. On the top, it says Rosie Pop Ups. All right. So once you remove this outer box, oh, Goodness. guys I don't have the little sleeve it actually has a velvet sleeve that it comes in as well I left that upstairs but you can use that to wipe off this beautiful case just take a look at that man this is the presentation for the fragrance there's really uh, nothing going on uh, as it pertains to the sides of the box or anything like that it does have a kind of velvety texture on the bottom but I'm gonna show you guys how this thing opens up. You see the Rosier Dove insignia and signature here on the box? On this case, it's not really a box. It's like a, it has a lacquered kind of finish to it. You can see the these kind of gold plates that cover the hinges on the box there on the back. But it opens up this way, and I'm gonna be careful. So it opens out. Oh man, look at that. And the fragrance rests inside the box. Securely. Now that is what I call a nice presentation. All right. So of course I'm going to be careful here, and I'm going to take the fragrance out. The box just closes back up like so. Again, I just love that signature there in gold. That is just a really nice 
luxur luxurious touch. <sighs> and here's the bottle. Parfums de la Nuit, number two, from the house of Roger Parfums. Again, the bottles on Roger's fragrances are absolutely amazing. Now, this fragrance retails for uh, about 1400 bucks. I think the retail price, I did get somewhat of a discount. Um, I always treat myself to a, uh, if it's a more expensive fragrance, I usually wait till around Christmas time. I kind of reward myself for the hard work that I put in on this channel. So something that's a little bit more expensive, I'll usually wait until around Christmas time to purchase a fragrance. Last year, I purchased the Agalev from Roger Parfums. And then this year, I did. I went with Line de Parfum de Line de Wheat number two. We can just look at the bottle. Again, the Roger signature or on the side there, on the back. You kind of see the details there as well. Again, presentation obviously is top notch. There on the cap, you can actually see the Roger's signature there as well. So again, presentation on these fragrances are just top notch in my humble opinion. And it's a part of, you know, kind of that experience and what you're paying for on a fragrance at this price point. I think that what I paid for it, I would probably say it's equivalent to about 25% off of the price. It was still close to a thousand bucks. But again, I'm a collector. It's a fragrance I've wanted for a while. And I treated myself to this for Christmas. So man, this thing right here is an amazing scent. Now, how I got introduced to this fragrance was I purchased a fragrance from Beverly Hills Perfumery. And uh, with if you've never purchased a fragrance from Beverly Hills Perfumery, you'll also get a chance to get at least three to four samples of other fragrances that you want to try. And when I purchased this particular fragrance, I actually got a sample of this. I got a sample of Blue Sapphire from Bodicea Victorious. I got a sample of, I want to say it was Green Sapphire from Bodicea and also Ganymede, uh, the fragrance that a lot of people have been talking about uh, this year as well. So I got samples of all four fragrances and as you can see, I already have two of these fragrances in my possession because I purchased Blue Sapphire and I had to get my hands on this one right here from Roja Parfums. Guys, it opens up. There's a lemon. There's a little lemon bergamot combination in this fragrance, but it's kind of short lived, which you'll find with a lot of Roja fragrances. There, a lot of these fragrances are really have a kind of traditional feel to them. Uh, sometimes he does really well with fougeres and chypres and stuff like that, but they usually have a little bit of bright freshness in the opening, but it's usually about all the other elements of the fragrance, and this one is no different. So you get a little bit of that in the opening. And one thing I will say, if you're not a person that can tolerate a little bit of something dark and skanky in a fragrance, a lot of Roja's fragrances may not be for you. There's a little bit of civet uh, in this fragrance as well as castorium. Castorium kind of gives an animalic leather feel, leathery kind of feel to fragrances, and civet is just a little bit skanky. Um, almost accustomed to what you would probably smell in oud to some extent, but they're civet in this. You get a little bit of that in the opening, but the brightness of the, the lemon and the bergamot in the opening of this fragrance really offsets that. So it's very short lived. So you do pick it up. And oddly enough, it's listed as a base note, the civet, but you do pick it up. I pick it up in the opening. But again, the citruses and the, the bergamot really balance it out uh, when the fragrance opens up. Now, when the fragrance starts to dry down, um, to me, it starts to get kind of balsamic and slightly resinous. You have Tulu balsam in here, which really gives a sweetness, a ambery sweetness to this fragrance. But you also have other uh, accords that you usually find in a really good ambery accord. You have some labdanum in here, and you're also gonna start to get sweetness in this from tonka bean. Now, you start to get this kind of cocoa kind of vibe in the heart of the fragrance as well, but they don't have cocoa or cacao listed as a note. I don't see it listed as a note, it could be. It may be coming from the patchouli in here as well. So maybe when you combine that sweetness from the tonka bean, you get the patchouli note in here, you get again the, the tulu balsam, which gives this kind of slightly sweet ambery feel to the fragrance, as well as the labdanum in here as well. You start to kind of get that sweet vanillic ambery touch with some tonka bean in the heart of the fragrance. And again, very balsamic, very 
resinous feel to the fragrance with a slight hit of kind of a chocolate cocoa, cocoa or cacao kind of vibe in this fragrance and i love it that's why i said it has a gourmand touch because of the ambery presence to this fragrance but you're also going to get some rum so that booziness is in here as well and this is after that very short-lived opening where you get the citruses and a little bit of that civet it becomes all about the booziness of rum the sweetness from the ambery accords and the tonka bean but this is my favorite part of this fragrance because again amber patchouli tonka three of my favorite notes in perfumery and they're all in the heart of parfum de la nuit number two and that's actually why i chose this one over number one and number three now when i looked at the note breakdown again at this point in my journey i know what i like I know what I like a lot of times, and I love amber, I love patchouli, and I love tampa beans, and they're all in this fragrance. So, home run in the heart of this fragrance, some stuff that I really love in my fragrances. Now, on the dry down, very masculine. Woody, slightly earthy and green. That's what you get in the base of this fragrance, and that's primarily coming from, of course, as you could imagine, there is gaiac wood in here, so it's really dry, woody, Again, a little bit earthy uh, in the dry down. The patchouli is still here as well. And so you're still going to get some of those sweet hints and elements in this as well. But the dry down really becomes about the dry woods and the earthiness, that kind of manly earthiness uh, in the fragrance. But again, it balances itself out really well from those dry woody elements to the sweeter elements in here from the amber and tonka and stuff like that. It really, really uh, balances itself out well in this fragrance. And that's something I look for in a fragrance like this to kind of have those different nuances where it takes you on all these different transitions, but it is balanced really, really well, almost to the point where it's sometimes a little bit harder to detect some of the individual notes. So in addition to that dry woody earthiness when it dries down that you get from uh, the Gaiac wood and the vetiver, you're also gonna start to really get some really heavy leathery nuances in this fragrance and that is coming from papyrus and the castorium so it starts to get really leathery again really masculine fragrance when it dries down again those leathery facets uh, that you get as well as the dry woods and earthiness as well all really show itself in the base of the fragrance and it gives this fragrance some great depth and again to my what i would describe as manliness now this fragrance performs all day and I know, of course, if you're going to spend that kind of money on a fragrance, you really start to count uh, even more so what kind of performance you get out of it. But no need to worry there because this fragrance goes 10 plus hours on my skin. Again, your mileage may vary, but I do get great performance out of it. But overall, this is just my kind of jam, man. So I would really recommend you guys get a sample of it if you can. I know it's expensive, but if you like these kind of fragrances, then I think this is one that you really will enjoy. Now, as far as seasons that you should wear this fragrance, obviously, the way it's composed, I think it will be better served for cold weather, but you can definitely get away with wearing it year round. You can get away with wearing it year round um, as a signature scent. Now, again, people say, oh, well, you spend that kind of money. Well, it depends on how you look at it. You could spend that kind of money and wanna make sure you can get your usage out of it and not just re reserve it for special occasions, but to each his or her own I think it's better in the cooler temperatures, but you can definitely get away with wearing this fragrance year round. But that's it guys, that's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed my review of Parfums de La Nuit, number two from the house of Roger Parfums. As always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. I know you don't have to watch, but you do, but, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use this information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your boy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good. And of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.